Hey everyone, what's up? It's the Amber Bro here, and welcome back to another RPG Maker MV tutorial. This tutorial will be showing you how to take control of the event. So then, here's what you're going to be making. As you can see, we're moving around the bat, and uh, the screen follows them. Uh, and you can actually park the bat. <laughs> so I'm going to park them right here, and as you can see, um, we got off, and we're back here. So you can get on the bat again, or not get on the bat, but rather take control of the bat again if you want to. Um, let's see, up here land up here. So as you can see, we're back here. So it's a pretty cool uh, thing. However, it does not work with mouse control. Unfortunately. See, as you can see here, uh, you can try to click, but it doesn't work. So you, you are going to have to use arrows for this. If you are um, using some sort of an... Well, use, if you're going to make a Android or iOS game, I really don't recommend uh, using this method because you won't be able to click. But no worries, I am going to upload another tutorial soon, it's going to be pretty darn cool. But yeah, so here's how you do it. First, you want to make an event. You want to make it an action button, and you want to give it the graphic. If you have a, a sort of a weight animation or anything like that, or a flying in place animation, make sure you check stepping. Now what you want to do is you want to make a switch called control. If you don't understand switches, um, basically they're simple things where you can turn it on or off, and you can have conditions uh, set to where something happens when it's on or off. So make a, make a switch called Control and turn it on. Disable the menu access. This is important because otherwise you're going to open the menu and you cancel out the ride or the, the control. Next, make another event tab by clicking New Event Page. Give it the exact same graphic, same old things over here, check walking and stepping. Uh, check, through for, uh, check through if you're having a flying based kind of event, an event that can fly places. Um, let's see. The animation you want you want to have fixed. You don't have to change any of that. What you do want to change is uh, the speed and the frequency. The frequency has to be the highest, otherwise it's going to look a little bit stuttery. Kind of. Uh, make this an auto run as well. Now then, if you don't understand variables, that's okay. I'm going to be uploading a video soon um, explaining how variables work, understanding variables. But basically, go to control variables. Uh, you're going to make three variables: ex, ey, and map id. For ex, we're going to set it equal, uh, here we go, to game data, and we're going to select character, this event, screen X. That's going to get the X screen in pixels where the character is. Do the same for uh, EY, but set EY equal to the screen Y. Now, we're going to do a conditional branch. Uh, the conditional branch, you can be accessed, it can be accessed right there, as you see in there. The conditional branch is going to check if the variable EX is less than 100. If it's less than 100, then it scrolls the map left at the speed at the same speed that you have your event. It can be a little slower if you want it to, kind of like awkward, not really, I don't know, kind of like smoothly scroll into it, kind of. But uh, I recommend having it the exact same and um, distance of 1. So then we're going to do another conditional branch to check if EX is greater than or equal to, yeah, greater than, I made a little mistake there. Um, greater than 716, which is 816 minus 100, um, then it scrolls right by 1. And if EY is less than 100, then it scrolls up by 1. And if EY is greater than 524, which is a, uh, 624 is the screen height minus 100, um, which would be 524, then it scrolls the map down. Now we're going to do a conditional branch to check if you're holding the up button. And if you are, it sets move route for this event and it moves it up. Uh, do, rem do remember to check the skip if cannot move. Uh, because otherwise, you're gonna if you end up like at the top of the map, for example, like you, you'll get stuck. <laughs> so you do want to check that. Then we're gonna see if you're pressing down, and if so, then you're gonna move the event down. If you're pressing left, move the event left. If you're pressing up right, move the event right. Now we're gonna check and see if you're holding the cancel button. And if you are. Then we're gonna do control switches. Uh, you're gonna turn control back off. You're gonna wait for 20 frames. Well, uh, wait can be found here on tab two. Select wait. Wait for about 20 frames. Um, then we're going to control variables again. Then this time we're gonna set ex equal to the player's map x, not screen x, map x. Now we're going to set ey equal to the player's map y. And we're going to we're going to make the uh, variable called map ID. We're going to set it equal to game data, map ID. Now we're going to simply transfer the player using a transfer event, which can be accessed here. Transfer player. 
um, and the information for it is going to be, instead of a direct designation, we're going to select designation with variables. We're going to select the ID as map ID, X we're going to set to EX, and Y we're going to set to EY. Select retain as the uh, area here, and select none as the transition, or you can have a transition if you want. That's going to bring the camera back to the player. You can, you can set up sort of a scroll effect if you wanted to, but I went with a simple method. Now, you want to change menu access again and re-enable it. That can be found here. Change menu access on the third tab right here. Now you want to re-enable it though. And that's all there is to it. You click OK, and then you play test it, and you have what we've seen earlier. So that's it. Now I'll see you guys later. Thank you all so very much for watching. Peace out.